Welcome back to uh, episode 27 of Wheel of Sniffs. Uh, this is George. Uh, Josh is over here as well. Uh, this week, uh, if you don't know, uh, we don't get to pick the game we want to play every week. We let a randomizer wheel. And, uh, you know, everybody hates playing sports games. We had a sports game last week. Uh, we drew back-to-back sports games. This week, we got NBA Live 95. Uh, how do you feel about drawing a basketball game when we drew it, Josh? I'm fine with it. I, I remember playing basketball games. Primarily jam, but still. Hey, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. I mean, I don't follow basketball now, but I feel like, to me, as an old old guy, I ain't going to say old school, I'm just old. Basketball in the 90s hit different. It did. The uniforms, the warm-ups... The TV coverage, the collecting the sports cards, I mean, it didn't matter. You know, if you were Carl Malone, of course, you know, who didn't like Jordan, you know? Of course, it's for social media. He would have been ruined in social media. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, this was back before you, uh, you, had, you didn't have these little baby frou-frou rules that, yeah, you know, I mean, back it then, was, it, it was you physical. got the shit beat out of It was more physical. Absolutely. People had broken nose, yes. black eyes, I mean. And it was just like, I feel like some of the stories, when you talk about some of the basketball stories, it, it all comes from the 90s for me that's where it resonates so i mean we had a lot of greats in the 90s too oh you did i mean it was just magic jordan dennis rodman that wonderful human being yeah (laughs) the worm but you know you may have had the best uh uh you know what are you gonna call it the best teammate ever with scotty you know you had carl malone john stockton yeah you had sean kemp and gary payton the glove who says he could guard michael jackson or jordan he, he couldn't guard Michael Jackson. No, less. no one can. Michael guard. Jordan in the last dance, he said he uh, he could have handled him, and uh, Michael Jordan belly laughed. Yeah. He couldn't even take it serious. Yeah, but uh, yes. but I mean, this was the golden age of basketball. It was. So uh, let me just read you. I, I'm going to tell you what's on the cover of the box, but first I'm going to read you the back of it. So it kind of gives you uh, a brief rundown. I mean, it's a basketball game, so there ain't a whole lot of story to put in, and then it hits the bullet points of all the new stuff that's in here that. Uh, that you may not have known. Uh, so the back of the box reads NBA Live 95. And not going to lie, you got to pause your, That just sounds good. It does. It? Just NBA Live 95. All new, fast, and awesome. NBA Live 95 is a totally new. Uh, NBA Live 95 is totally new. EA Sports bring you the best basketball game today. It combines fast action gameplay with all the strategy and realism of five-on-five five basketball. All new features, and so it bullet points here. New 30-degree perspective that opens up the court like never before. A new live TV-style presentation bringing in a new gaming experience. Cool new passing on the run and turbo features uh, equal real fast breaks. Fresh dunks, alley-oops, and passing animations that you control New slow motion dunk feature allows you to relish the big plays. You got 46 offensive plays and four defensive sets. 12 megs. megs. This is what cracked me up. 12 megs. It don't say MBs. It says MEGS, like the damn sharks. Yep. 12 megs of intense gameplay, not just eight. (laughs) Woo, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Accurate player and user stats are saved via battery backup. Fresh jamming music gets you hyped to play. All 17 of the 93-94 NBA teams, plus two all-star and four custom teams. Play a full or reduced season, playoffs, or even trade your players. Uh, Control the matchup on D. Do you double-team Hakeem? And a new five-player mode. Which, uh, the five-player mode, I'm guessing, was one person and then the multi-tap. Had to be. Yeah, so... Had to be. I will tell you, though, just reading that, Hakeem was, he was a, a force to be reckoned with. Him and Claude. Uh, I don't know in their heyday. I mean, I know Malone was a beast, too. I, I think Hakeem probably... He had, like, that hook shot. Yeah. Uh, Malone always kicked that leg out. Either way, I wouldn't... I wouldn't want to run into him in a dark alley, much less in the damn paint. I'm yeah. Freaking, I mean, they were big... Yeah, they, they were they were big boys. Hakeem, the dream. Yep. Elijah one. Uh, so the cover of the the game is actually kind of cool. It shows John Starks, who to me is the most hated son of a bitch in basketball, <laughs> because he is always he's a New York Nick. He's always running yeah. that mouth, and there is nothing that ever made me more of a Reggie Miller fan than when Reggie Miller scored like them thirteen points in eight seconds to beat New York. He, yeah. he got in them. He trash talked, got in John Starks' head, but John Starks was just a little punk. He's a little bitch, is what he was. <laughs> 
So it shows John Starks on the cover going for this layup with what looks like Will Smith, but is actually Robert Ory trying to block it from the Rockets, and the Rockets won it that year. Robert Ory has won like a crazy amount. Like he's played on all these great teams as like kind of like that Pippen. He may be like the he's best six man or yeah. best teammate because. I think he's won like seven rings or something. Uh, he's something like that. It's, it's ridiculous. And he looks like Will Smith. So the guy's got the whole deck stacked against him. He's got money, fucking athleticism. He's got the rings. He's and got, he's the, got looks. the looks. He's got the looks. I bet you <laughs> Jada ain't going to be running around on no Robert Ory. He ain't going to keep his pimp hands right? strong. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this game, uh, you know, it was uh, released in 94. It was released on three systems. Well, I say systems. One's an operating system. Which is kind of strange. We don't typically talk about this. Yeah. We got it on Sega Genesis. Yep. Nintendo. Super Nintendo. And MS DOS. So, MS DOS? Yes, MS DOS. Uh, another thing I'm going to touch on too when it talks about the plays uh, up here uh, before we get to there's 46 offensive plays and four defensive sets. I could be incorrect, but growing up, the NBA wasn't the. Why would you have 46 offensive plays and so, and so few sets on defense? is back in the day, and I could just be talking out my ass, I don't think you could play zone. In the NBA, I think you had to play man-to-man. They would you call did. a penalty on you if you weren't playing man-to-man. Yeah. So there wasn't a real... The only thing you really change up is, hey, so-and-so can't stop this guy. you got to put a different up. guy yeah, on. change So up. everything was man-to-man, which I do think made things a little bit better, made it a little bit more... Uh, uh, a little more attitude to the game too, you know. That that trash talk, I think that's where it that really trash. got. Yeah, that's that's whenever you had the true ankle breakers come yes. in. That's where those big plays would come in. I remember Penny Hardaway's commercials. He'd shoot ba- baby Penny. He'd be like, "You can't guard me." Yeah, Secret Service couldn't guard me. <laughs> ah, you gotta stop fanboying about nineties NBA basketball. But so uh, it was uh, developed by Hitman or Hitman Productions which I've never heard of before and from what I've seen no. they really only did four games from what I've seen that I could find uh, they did two NBA live games 95 and 96 uh, and they did two PGA Tour games and that was all I've seen so what you're telling me is that our odds of drawing one of their games this week is, is... We're, we're getting one you, you've hit you rock <laughs> just with the odds of like We've got we got worse odds than uh, drawing an FX chip game back to back. So we're gonna get either NBA Live '96 or, or one of the PGA, or, yeah, games. or one of the golf games. So uh, EA published it, uh, Electronic Arts. I'm not even gonna go into it. now. Back in the day, they were like, good. Now, when you talk EA, you're talking Battlefront, you know, uh, Battlefield. I may be a little out of place, but. I'll go ahead and tell you, in the 90s, when you mentioned EA, it was sports games, and they were all bangers. Yep. All, like, that is what they did. I, I, don't even, I didn't even want to look up any other game they did, because they were just, you know, straight up yeah. your sports. And and also in the 90s, that's whenever that hit thing came out. EA Sports. It's in the game. That is in my make it, John. Same I'm here. Just gonna let you Number know. one. So, uh... <laughs> This was actually a uh, follow-up to NBA Showdown. And this was the first uh, installment in the NBA Live series, which went on for several years. So, I mean, it was pretty successful. This uh, The NBA Live, they kind of had their own staples that they brought into it, like the uh, isometric on-court perspective, uh, you know, introducing... I ain't going to say they were the first to do it, but they had the turbo button. And... Uh, they had their free throw meter, the team meter. Now, at the end of the day, the team meter didn't matter, matter a whole lot to me because I played my shit street ball. I didn't want no fouls, yeah. no blood, no foul. Uh, so, but, you know, that's kind of like in the, even in modern sports games, like in soccer, the worst, you know, you got to figure out how to do the penalty shot. Like in basketball, free throws are an important thing. And it's normally a give me in most basketball, like actual games with these guys that train 24-7. But it's kind of hard to translate that into being able to hit a free throw pretty easy in a yeah. sports game. So, you know, they kind of had that going for them. Uh, this is one thing that I thought was, uh, to me, I would have never guessed it. But when I seen it, I'm like, this is 100% the, everything about this. They actually modded the game engine that EA was using to run the FIFA game to run this game. 
And I'll go ahead and tell you, FIFA 95, FIFA 96, I know 96 for sure, maybe not 95, but it had that same view of the court except the soccer field. Yeah. Uh, man, them FIFA games were straight fire. And I'm like, this does, this is freaking, it, I feel like I was playing FIFA on the Super Nintendo, but I'm just playing basketball. Yeah. Like, it, so I, I get where that came from. Uh, the, you technically call this, to me, I just call it a freaking sports game. I guess it's technically an uh, NBA simulation game. Uh, so, I know you can sim to me. Uh, when I think of sim games, I'm thinking of sim and turns. and Not really simulation as much for me, but I, it yeah. does check the box for it. So, uh, uh, this was the first official NBA simulation game to introduce customized fictional teams. Uh, one thing that was a little strange, uh, and this is the last thing I got before we get into it, uh, so even though they were released at 94, I didn't really look at DOS. I think it was a little bit later, but uh, I think it was in like November, October 94. Super Nintendo released it. Genesis released it in 94. So the Super Nintendo released it using the 93, 94 rosters. Okay, you know, it's always a year behind. Yeah. Well, the Genesis used the 94, 95 rosters, but they didn't have all the rookie class in it. Okay. The MS DOS came out and they had it all updated up to the trade deadline with the entire rookie class in there, which is probably easier on a computer, even though I think it's really early to just say, oh, you just put a patch in to fix that. Yeah. So, you know, I could understand playing on the Genesis. You'd be like, hey, I got them rookies from that year, or you might have a little bit more updated roster. But, yeah. uh, you know, for me, 93, 94 was, was fine. I, I, it was just kind of yeah. strange that. You know, that was back in the day. There wasn't a, hey, release a game and send the updates. It was whatever's on the card. Super Nintendo, the- yeah, they had to, if they already had the rosters done for Genesis, I'm sure they would have just brought them right over, but they must have already, Super Nintendo must have just been in production. Before. Or, yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's a quick rundown. Uh, we're blabbering on like idiots over our uh, uh, 1995 freaking basketball. So uh, let's just jump into what makes and breaks the game, Josh. And you hit the damn nail on the head. The first fucking thing you hear. <laughs> EA Sports. It's in the game. It's in the game. That you knew. It didn't matter. Hockey, football, soccer, basketball. I'm sure there was more. It, probably a snowboarding game. Did they do baseball? I don't know. That was what made EA for me. And I think every kid, there's maybe only one other, arguably, thing that was ever spoken or shouted at a TV before a game started up. And it might have been the Sega. Yeah. I might have said EA Sports more, but that's because that you was are, iconic. It's iconic. And the reason why you didn't do Sega is, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier. You were a Nintendo fan. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, to me, we had both. I had Nintendo and Sega. So. T- and, you know, even when EA rebranded it, kind of, and they were going, it was like, I think it was when SSX out, it was like EA big. Yeah. It was still good. And I actually seen a TikTok. It wasn't too long ago, within the past year or two. And somebody said, hey, I ran into the EA sports guy. And they pulled up their phone and they said, do it, man, do it. And they looked like they were like at an event. They're just yeah. having fun. And the dude did it and it sounded just like the fucking game. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. And he's not nearly as old as you would think. I mean, he, or he looked like he aged very well. Yeah. He, he did, I would figure he's like in a damn walker now. No, yeah. he was still he was still getting it, son. But yeah. uh, I said, I mean, like I said, we're going back to the whole the EA, it's in the game. I mean, like you said, it's, it's an iconic sound. And the only reason why, I think it's number two out of the whole iconic sounds, is because if I'm not mistaken with Sega, it was every single game you put in that was a Sega game, they all went, Sega. And to me, it's EA Sports, but I do have to give props because that Sega one was uh, pretty good. I even remember the commercials when it was more like a, Sega! Yeah. Yeah, I like that more than the, the, but uh, anyways... Uh, you know, before you even get into the game, the, this game gives you a lot of options. So, uh, and, yeah, and let me just go ahead and throw this out there. 
I like that. You know what I'm going to say is it's a basketball game that follows, for the most part, the fundamentals of freaking basketball. Sounds so stupid to say, except for last week when we played Hit the Ice, and it did not, and it sucked. It was terrible. Now, I'm not going to say because it didn't follow the rules of hockey that Hit the Ice sucked. It sucked on its own for several reasons. But even though, you know, you can turn off some of the options to kind of trick the game a little bit, there was a lot of, of game modes in here. I mean, you had playoffs, you had the season. You, you had, had the expedition. Yeah, and and you could actually sim some of your uh, season. You play an 82-game season if you want to. That hurts my head thinking about that. Yeah. That's kind of like the old baseball games where you play like 156, 162 games. I'm like, yeah, there ain't nobody going to do that. Or even the next the year's game's going to come out before I can play that many games. Yeah. And uh, But, you know, it was nice to know. It was like, hey, if you want to go in there, and having the battery backup save was really nice. That's super nice. And uh, not many games had that. Yeah, if I'm not I ain't mistaken. gonna say he's the first because yeah, I think on Super Nintendo, right off the bat, I think Super Mario World had it. Uh, yeah. But you know, not having to worry about writing down a freaking code and that was nice. But you know, at the same time, it's like, hey, you know, you got your friends over. You just want to play some exhibitions. You want to play all star teams. You want to play your made up teams. That's great. Uh, if you want to play a season your home back then we weren't well we were complete retards but we didn't burn our house down you could be left at home as a kid and i just sat there and just freaking work on a season yeah and uh so you know judging by how much time you had you could find a game mode to do it uh the only thing you know a little nitpicky we're probably getting ahead because i do feel like nba live 95 is a very important game uh i think it's probably more important than a lot of people will realize because I think some of this stuff was pretty new, and they kind of stepped outside the box. And uh, just go ahead and tell you, I don't have a whole lot of, uh, uh, I don't have any speed running for this, Josh. But I do have some reviews from some video game magazines, and you would be surprised with what they have to say about this game. Okay. And I don't think they're wrong. But, uh, you know, they definitely tried a lot, and I think for the most part it worked. Uh, uh there was also plenty of options before you played the game. And I can't even remember them all. I was going to write them down. But I'm like, man, I almost need a screenshot. Because it was like, you could change the freaking time of the quarters. You could turn your fouls on and off. Player fatigue. Player injuries. Uh, their difficulty. I mean, can't even remember it. You want to turn on the freaking 24... I don't know. Maybe you had the shot clock had to stay on. You can turn on the 10-second backcourt. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there was like a you freaking could, option yeah, for everything. You, you could almost change the entire aspect of the basketball game if you wanted to. And one thing I did immediately do, and I just know this because of the era, isn't about this game itself, it, or you know, locking it or not. I immediately turned the damn game down to three minute quarters because there's no way I could power through a twelve minute quarters. Oh know? yeah, no, I, I went to four, and and it's the same when you when you're playing the the Madden even Madden games now. I'm not playing fifteen minute quarters, you know. No, uh, it just it, I'll do it every now and then to prove a point. Yeah, I mean, if you want to say I can score a hundred points in a freaking game, but uh, you know. But, I mean, hell, you done that against our friend DB oh, yeah. on seven-minute quarters. I don't know if we should really be speaking about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't think things were ever the, the same. They weren't that. the same. Patrick Mahomes couldn't do shit against Cleveland Browns is all yeah. I'm saying. Uh, of course, I may have sacrificed my soul the first year to get all the draft. You did. Beat, but, uh, but, no, like I said, I mean, like, they done something good. Like I said, they gave you the fundamentals of basketball with the option to turn it off. I mean... Yeah, the football game. Almost every sport game has those modes now. But like I said, I think at the time, I think that was relatively new to to sports games in general. Well, and and another thing is, uh, you know, I'm just sitting here thinking. I, I mean, and I know I'm missing some basketball games. We're talking about some freaking basketball games when you say, hey, what's the first basketball games you ever played? I'm thinking, you know, double dribble, uh, Bulls versus Celtic, whatever that one is that had Jordan in it. But, like, there wasn't really a whole lot. Like, some of the games that you were playing, like, hoops, they were old Nintendo games. So, like, you're kind of getting a different look. So, it's yeah. easy to look at this and say, hey, this isn't very graphically appeasing. But I feel like it was coming from where you came from. And, uh, you know, some of the mechanics were still there. I mean, uh, you know, the controls were what the controls were. But, uh they weren't crisp, but they no, were no. Uh, yeah, I kind of got them on my bracket, but uh, 
there was some kind of old school stuff that came over with it, even yeah. though it didn't quite work. But uh, uh, I thought, like, I'm just going to say that the players, you actually had the players. This is a licensed game. Yeah, that, and that, that, that's, my, that's my number two. Yeah, uh, is it's a licensed game. You ain't. There was no weird names, yep. no nicknames. These guys were these guys. Absolutely, and uh, you know, even though the animations are pretty simple, you can kind of tell who it was. Yeah, like I could tell the difference between B.J. Armstrong and Scotty Pippen on there. Now, between like Bill Cartwright and uh, shoot, I forget the other dude, the other big dude. A little tougher. You'd have to look at the numbers. And if yeah. you didn't know the numbers, you didn't know. And there were several people I didn't know who the hell they were just because I can't remember, you know, from the rosters of 95. I can go ahead and tell you when I played this some bitch of 95, I think I probably own this game. I can guarantee you I knew every single damn player on yeah. the teams. Yeah, you knew who to pass it to, how to get shit done. And uh, so it was kind of nice that I do think it kind of was graphically I'm not going to say great, but I think it was good. Uh, uh, you know, they, they did take a shot. They kind of put the 30-degree angle on the court, which does kind of give you a little bit more visual, you know, and that and I get that, and I'll give it props for that. And we'll, I give them props for trying. And we'll talk more about that yeah. in a little bit. Uh, uh, one thing I did <clears throat> enjoy, though, is when you go to the playoff mode, I mean, it kind of sucks, but... Yeah, we're in Tennessee. We don't have a basketball team. We have the Grizzlies. We didn't have them growing up. They're in Memphis. We don't claim Memphis. I'm not going to Memphis. Anything past Nashville's dead to us, you know. Uh, <laughs> but you that, know, that's true. And and it's even like the Titans. I never grew up with the Titans, so I still root for the Falcons because I never had a team. Yeah. And uh, you're not going to root for the Titans until they change those colors. <sighs> I don't know, man. Some of them uniforms Titans got is pretty good. I was actually almost, it was so obnoxious with my wife's family being from Georgia. I almost switched over to Tennessee, and then they had that great year and made a playoff run. I'm like, I can't switch over to a good team. I got to pick a sucky team. Like, if I'm going to jump ship on a team that I love, I got to pick a shit team. I can't bandwagon. And yeah. so now I'm just stuck with dealing with these a holes from Georgia talking about <laughs> Bulldogs and ugh. the Dirty Birds. No, I love the Braves, but I'm never going to quit the Braves. But. It's tough, but I digress. So, uh, you know, I didn't have no Hawks uh, allegiance. Growing up, we never had a team. So, going into the playoff mode, I'm like, how would you want to play some playoffs? It didn't let you just pick what team you wanted to put in the playoffs. If you wanted your sucky team to be in the playoffs that didn't make it in 94, you had to play a season to get You had to earn it. Yes. So, when you say, hey, I want to play the playoffs. If you just said, hey, I want to play the playoffs, I can't remember how many there was, 16 teams or 12 it was the actual playoff teams from the 93-94. Yeah, 93-94. So it's like, hey, you want to play? I hope you like one of these teams. And you could pick multiple teams and play them. You could, It would give you a star. Yeah. So if you're like, hey, man, I like the freaking Jazz, but then I like the freaking Knicks. The Heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could actually pick them and play both of them. Or if, you know, and I know me and my brother did this, he liked a team, and then I picked the other team. And so I'd watch him play a game. And, or you could sim it. And then, yeah. Another thing that was very classic that hit me right in the feels. And uh, I do appreciate the pettiness because I like, <laughs> I think this is, I don't know if this is the first game that did it because I'm sure it's one of the Maddens. But I feel like these games are the reason why some of the new games are the way they are. Uh, that It was old school when you. Uh, Picked your team and you select your controller. You moved it left or right. Yeah. And you know what? In the game, you could change your damn team. So when you're getting the shit beat out of you, you yeah. can just throw the game. You can, <laughs> out of that, they put a stop on that. Uh, yeah. What else? What do you have, Josh? Anything else? <laughs> I, I could keep going on and I've got like two more things that yeah. I really did like. Uh, well, one of the things that I really liked about it is I like how they gave you the full breakdowns of the teams. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah. The, the overall, the shooting, the passing. And they didn't just give you the number, like 94 versus 93. They gave you basketball. So, if well, offensive, basketball, basketball, basketball. Well, well not only that, but, it, you know, like it said, shooting, scoring, number one. Yeah. And then whenever you clicked the button, you got it. It was like five basketballs. Yes, And yes. you're like, okay, so number one is worth five basketballs. Cool. Like, I love it. And the basketballs were also animated. Yes, they, they were, were moving. spinning. Which I'm like, okay, okay, Nintendo. 
So I really enjoyed that, and I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I picked a Heat. They have Alonzo. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, and so I went with him, and I didn't didn't fully like I I played a season. But I didn't make it all the way through said season. Well, obviously on that. Now, one thing I we did... We got a week, man. We got a week. <laughs> There's one thing that I did like, too, is you could, as soon as... You could do it mid-play. You could... The replay options, you could hit... I think it was the select button, and it immediately pulled up replay. Yeah. Like, you could just replay the shit out of it, yep. you know? And, I mean, you, it, the options were crazy on this game. Like, this might be the most options that we've had in a game. You could turn on slow motion dunks. Uh, I mean, it was just freaking nuts, though, with the stuff that they put in there. And I can imagine just being, I don't know what I was in 93, 94. I had to be 13. I, I was just probably just squeaking, like a little squeaker. Just, oh, my God! <laughs> You know, like, that had to be the most awesome thing. And, I, and I'm and i not saying that other games didn't do it. It's just kind of hard when you're looking back. Like, I go ahead and tell you, if we get another NBA game, I can guarantee it's not going to have the options of this unless it's an NBA Live. I feel like it was kind of, I ain't going to say it's like Madden for EA Sports, but it definitely paved the way for other games as well. So, uh, one thing that... Uh, Probably my biggest one. This is the last thing I got on my heart with it. And it, and it kind of, it's it's a whole enveloping thing that was pretty consistent. If you were watching freaking Nani's basketball, this game freaking pegged it. I was a little let down with the startup of it. Like, I liked it. It even gives you this as an officially licensed game. Any reproductions has to be, have the written consent of NBA. It gave you the thing that they tell you before every sports game. But... The music was fire. Yep. The sound effects were good. And I go ahead and tell you, going through these menus, seeing some of these old... Uh, now, I do think some of the uh, animations for the teams was a little rough. But, you know, if you watch 90s basketball, this whole freaking game dripped 90s basketball. Like, from picking the teams to the startup to the colors to even when you start the game they kind of do like a start and lineup thing that you can skip and I'm like man this is a straight up freaking flashback all I need to do is see somebody drinking some damn Gatorade on the side I need a mod Rashad over there throwing it in or maybe Bob Costas calling the game <clears throat> a, a, a little warm up action on yeah. the court and I loved every bit of it <laughs> like I, if like I say if you never watch nice basketball or you don't care for classic basketball at this point, vintage basketball, you say, this is stupid. It was fire. Yeah. If you were alive during this time, this game hit Nani's basketball the nail on the head. I give you that. And also, you're forgetting. I I, I don't think you're forgetting. I think you're overlooking it. I think you're overlooking this well, one I'm aspect. It. It will bring it at me. I may be. They kept track of your rebounds. You're right. Your turnover. So at the end, of, hey, I'm bringing it back to the '90s. Okay, they done that back in the '90s, if I'm not mistaken. Well, you could. I mean, you get it in between quarters. They tell you your your percentage and your stats. So that is true. That is true. Yeah, and that's one of the things on the speed run. There was actually speed runs for like field goal percentage and three point. The, the speed runs were weird, but it was statistical. And I'm like, yeah. I don't do that shit. Yeah, because they were like, it's completion. Yeah, they're like, I think it was like percentage 10 seconds 100 percent. i'm like whatever you know fuck that I don't, I don't even know what they're talking about i, I was like technically i can i wanted to see who did a speed run play an 82 game season as a user that's what i wanted yeah. i want somebody to hammer down 82 <laughs> games playoffs nba finals and then sir you will be forever remembered yeah on speed run. but yeah no i i like said that that was my last big make it because you covered everything but you're about like me on the Mega Man episode. I just let you take over on this one. Well, I and, mean, I think I think when you say it's a sports game and you say, "Hey, this is," I'm kind of glad we played the first of the NBA lives, uh, the first that was ever made. So we can kind of grade it because it would kind of suck to got NBA Live '97 and then worked our way back. But it's easy to say, "Hey, this is a sports game," and it is just a sports game, and it's a basketball game, and it does have a lot of the the uh, problems you have in a lot of sports games and basketball games, and but at the end of the day, I see some of the stuff that they used in here in 
games today. So I feel like this was it was the, it's a dinosaur now, but I feel it like a it was stepping, a stepping stone. It was a stepping stone. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But like I said, I, my, my my last big make it was I like seeing the aspects of rebound. Phoenix one, Bulls zero. You know, right. I, I love seeing that. I was the worst blocker in the world. I couldn't block shit. I I got a couple. I got goaltending more than anything. I turned goaltending off. I See, said I fuck let, that. After I left straight rules on. Yeah, and and my God, like I say, if you wanted to play it by the book or you wanted to play it street ball, you can do it however the hell you wanted. Yeah. Uh, now the one thing that defaulted, I don't know if I could turn off is my shot clock. I think that I yeah, back court, back court didn't. Bought, you could turn it off. I don't know if you could turn off a 10 second backcourt violation where you got to yeah. bring it up to half court in 10 seconds. But once again, you know, I kind of just took it as it is and went with it. Yeah. So, uh, you have anything left on your heart for what makes the game, Josh? No, I do not. Well, let's go ahead and break it down in here. And I will go ahead and tell you, I'm a little upset with the startup screen, even though it doesn't look that bad when you look at it. It just kind of gives you a chord and says NBA Live 95. Yeah. You got the music. You got all this shit going for. It. I need a little bit more. Could've I, got, I need some like pixelated Shaquille O'Neal slamming the ball. Could have could, been a better picture. Could have been something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just throw this out there. This was to me maybe one of the uh, worst things right off the bat. That was obvious. Is I didn't think the controls were that great. No. Uh, okay. They weren't. They weren't crisp. But I don't think they were clunky. I think they were delayed. Well, I've got in here, and it's a big one, in all caps, the fucking players drift. There is yeah. a drift. Now, it's not like like uh, you let go and they keep moving forever, infinitely. But by God, if you're running, you know, if, if you're going to shoot a three-point damn shot, well, you better start launching it. Like, Because if you try to let off, like, and make a sharp cut like you would imagine a basketball player to do. Not really going to happen. No, no, no. And and that, that's where I think that that's why I'm chalking up to a delay. Now I don't know if I would, and and that kind of kind of tie that in with the controller because uh, uh, even though I appreciate that you got turbo, I didn't really see that there was much of a turbo meter. I don't know if it even really was. I didn't see one. The one thing I think that was lacking, uh, man. I, I, I'm going to say every one of these was my biggest problems because these were glaring problems. I felt like the heads-up display, like when you're playing the game, you see the score, everything's cool. And I will say that even the way it pops up the score after every score, it looked like a freaking NBA game. It did. I, I should have put that in the make it. But what sucked is you got a licensed game. Can you not, under that star when I pass it, can you not put S. Pippen? Or oh give, give, give me a name. Yes. Give me a name. So I did that, not like that. That, that. that was on my break it as well. Uh, that part bothered me, but also not having like a turbo meter under my guy. Uh, now I may, or, I may be missing in the corner. It. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm used to NBA Jam. I feel like they did it kind of right. I think like modern games kind of do it right. You don't really have to look away. You can kind of inadvertently right see. There. And, and you may have had infinite turbo. I don't know because... With the drift and the way my guys running around like a bunch of damn wild men, because uh, let's just say uh, my defense wasn't real just traditional. Shoved. You were shoved. Yes, the entire yes, time. that was exactly it. That was it. Was straight up NBA Jam for me. I'm gonna kick the shit out of you. Oh shit, they shot it. I hope my computer can rebound it. <laughs> and and when I could rebound it, uh, here's the next thing. The out of bounds fucking sucked. I would jump up, bounds. grab this board, and I'm like, throw a fucking elbow, but my guy would drift his ass out of yep. bounds. Hey, I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, I need to hit the guy on the corner. Open three, pass it out. My guy, I'm holding left, and it, like just barely touching left, and he runs out of bounds. Yep. I'm like, what a freaking idiot he looks like, just running out of bounds. Yep. I, was, I, I, I don't know if I want to. I, was, I don't know if I want to chalk that up to delay, controller drift. I don't know what to chalk that up to because I was playing on an emulator. Well, and I will tell you <clears throat> that is going to be accurate. It, the controls weren't crisp. I don't know if you call it drift. I don't know if it's the way it was designed. Uh, in another way that I can't freaking defend it is it seemed like shooting and drifting was encouraged. Yep. Because I'll go ahead and tell you, I try to sit there and set my feet. Like most people, you're going to shoot a shot. You set your feet. You, you line shoot it up. up. I'm over here throwing freaking air buckets. I'm the worst actual basketball player you've ever met. Just so you know. <laughs> like if you say, hey, here's 10 shots. Can you hit two free throws? I'm going to tell you I can hit six of them. I don't know if I can hit one of them. I'm just going to tell you that. I'm way better at basketball than I really am. 
So like it's like set your feet feet shoot. They're all over me. I can't yep. do shit. By God, you're at that three point line and you hit your shoot button and your dude jumps up and I swear to God he travels twenty feet in the damn air almost. And yep. then the ball comes out of his hand and it's like nothing but net every time. Yeah. And so it's like I feel like that's part of the game design, whether they meant, meant for it to be as bad as it was, because shooting and drifting was easier than just normal shooting. So that's one thing is like I feel like this isn't like an well, emulation thing. Well see, know? I had a hard time hitting threes. And the reason why is I kept passing to the wrong person because you couldn't pinpoint who you wanted to pass to. You hit you the, pointed in a direction. Yeah, that, you, there's several times where I pass it, pass it back, pass it back, pass it yeah. back, and then you might get it over there. Exactly. You know? So you couldn't really pick who you wanted to receive. Right. Receive the rock, and and nine times out of ten it was somebody wrong, even though he was wide open. And I'm like, oh shit! I'm a, I have enough time to run out and hit a J shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, airball every single time well I would say that I was kind of I felt like it was kind of weak the stealing opportunity it was pretty much like NBA Jam you just push yeah you just shove them so uh, the the shooting mechanic was I felt really weird to me I'm not going to say it's broken because you kind of figured it out as you went yeah but like you know you push the button and sometimes he shoots sometimes he don't sometimes he immediately goes up sometimes it seems like it's a second delay but uh so right off the bat this game I'm sitting there and I'm down by like four points because I'm trying to figure out what the damn buttons are yeah and so I get a freaking fast break and I got horse grant coming down through there and i hit the i hold the damn shoot button and he pulls out this gem that yeah. is awesome and i'm like fuck right you know yeah. and i'm like and i mean i'm feeling it and so then i'm coming down and then i've got like this little white guy on him and i'm like man i'm going back to the well feed the dog yeah just keep feeding them so he goes in there and this little white guy's in front of him and he jumps up and he literally goes under the freaking rim before the yeah. ball I'm See, holding it because I'm like I I'm had the same it. issue and I'm like hey. and that's why I chalked up to a delay I'm like it's gotta be a delay so I'm I say okay I'm not gonna say a skinny white dude can't defend you down in the paint but at the same time if I'm going in for a jam and you're gonna make me hold the button down to do this slam for love of God, if you're not going to give me the slam, at least give me, even if it's a low percentage, let the ball go up in the air. Don't let me go under the goal and then it go, yeah. you know, and like. And then out of bounds. Yes, yes, or they re, they got it. Now, the other part that was complete bullshit was the blocking mechanism in this game. Yeah. I'll go ahead and tell you. Now, I'm not saying that I'm a great shooter or anything on this game. But I'll go ahead and tell you, there's a time that I actually turned my head and said, what the fuck ever. Like, I mean, it was like, give me a break. We've went too far. <laughs> like, we went, you never go full re. They went. I'm sitting there. The guy is behind me. My guy goes to shoot. And he jumps up with his back to my back. And the ball goes straight from my hand to his. His back is to me. He's going the other <laughs> damn direction. I was like, you son of a bitch. And I was like, how in the hell does that happen? I had a basically an open shot. And there were several times where the guy would go up for a shot. And, and I, it did happen with me as well. But it wasn't because I was controlling them. It was computer. It was because it was the computer. <laughs> and I'm like, man, this shot blocking is just freaking nuts. Uh, the shot blocking was all over the place. And like I said, the only time I managed to block anything, it was goaltending for me. <sighs> Yeah, well, I'm I'm pretty well just trying to kick the shit out of him out the key, and when it got down into the damn pain, I just let Jesus take the wheel down there and, and hope for the best. Uh, you know, and the fast breaks were pretty good, you know. But another thing that I thought was pretty poor in this game is the defense, like the computer's defense, recovered so quickly. Yeah, like now, you know, I'm used to like modern games. You can set the pick and rolls and stuff, but like if your dude got freaking open, he wasn't open. Like there was no like, hey, there's nobody within five feet. Let me put this shot up. No, every shot I shot had a guy around, yeah. unless it was a fast break. And yeah. those guys would still almost catch me on a fast break. My thing is that, like I said, back in back in the nineties, you know, zone coverage wasn't a thing at the time. Mm. All right, so if I'm playing man to man. Give me an indicator of who I'm fucking guarding. Well, and that goes with you don't know who you're controlling. Right. And you don't know who you're, 
you know who you're controlling. And now I'm not you, you can pick out the big guy and the big guy, but like yeah, the but game is easy. But the gameplay too is almost too fast for it. Yeah, too, which is something that I hate to really complain about because so many things are slow. But uh, I don't know. I mean, it was just some of that kind of. And, and another thing that's probably probably one of my last things I'm really going to... Well, I've, I've, yeah, I've got two things. Two things, see? Okay. But I, my, my biggest thing is, like I said, this was a licensed game by Nintendo. They put a lot of money into this. Like I said, they couldn't give you the little description, a little name tag of who it was. All right. And back in the heyday of this, during the 95s, like I said, no zone coverage, man-to-man coverage. So... If you gave me an indicator, I think I could have done a lot better on defense. Defense itself was almost impossible to play as, unless you just happen to get lucky. You get lucky sometimes in the passing when you're passing into traffic. Sometimes that's what I'm saying. Like, like you might get lucky, but overall, just let Jesus take the wheel. You just put your dude wherever he, wherever you need him to be at the time. And you know that's all you could really do. Now, you know, one thing I'm going to throw out here that's really not too much. This is the problem that happens with all the sports games, especially these early ones. Uh, even though there's a few that I do enjoy to this day, well, I say that. I've not played them in several years until we draw them on here. The uh, replayability on this is tougher for me now than it was back in the day. So yeah. that's one thing now, and that's just kind of the sports genre. Um, but the nostalgia was there. Yeah, yeah. Now, I can guarantee you, back in the 90s, I probably played the shit out of this game. But, you know... And that was one thing, like, it wasn't like a, it wasn't really rubber banded, like, when they get too far ahead or you get too far ahead, but I could see me, like, beating a team by 20 points just because I got good at the game. Yeah. Or I could see if I was down by a few points being able, like, in the first game, I think I was down by 10 points after the first quarter. I came back and won by, like, six points. Yeah. So, you know, everything was obtainable, but, like, just playing it over and over, even playing three-minute quarters, which was fun, I'm it gets like, repetitive. yeah, by the time you play playoff series and stuff, that's tough. It's tough. And the other thing that I'm just going to go ahead and put out here, and this is going to go into my fun facts, is who the hell are you picking in the 90s? Who is the freaking team that you're going to go with? Goddamn Chicago Bulls. You know who's not in this game? Fucking Michael Jordan. Yep. There's another player that's not in this game. That I'm sure there's several, but there's another one that's in the fun facts that I'm going to drop in there. So uh, I personally went with my team of the 90s that I was in love with, the Orlando Magic with Anthony and fucking Shaq. Shaq's still cool as shit. And for me, he's a little bitch over at Memphis State. <laughs> you know, can't handle shit against Tennessee Vols. Is like, so fuck Anthony now. But back in the day, he was a good player. I did enjoy him. Uh, I did like playing uh, Nick Anderson. You know, uh, oh, I was just freaking, uh, I said Horse Grant. I think Horse Grant was actually playing for the Magic then. It might have been Bill Cartwright for the Bulls still. But either way, uh not having all the players, you know, it's kind of like playing a hockey game at that time and not having Wayne Gretzky. It's yeah. like the baseball, but you're not getting the home run hitters. And not having Michael Jordan, that sucked. But, you know, what can you do about it? That's, that's all I've got on my heart that breaks this for me, Josh. So. That's true. I mean, I'll, my team, uh, I, said, I, I played as the, I think it was the Heats. It might have been the Suns. Hell, I can't even remember. But I said, I mean, I play. I'm trying. I'm. I'm trying to Google real quick as to why I chose the team that I did. I think. I think I've done it because they were the number one scoring. Okay. Because I figured that the reasoning why I chose them is I already knew that defense was going to be impossible. And I hate to say that because, you know, just throwing it out there, whenever we used to do our Madden League that we done, like mm-hmm. out of the people we play with, I think I was the best defensive team that you could go against. Like, you know, there I'm, I remember playing against, oh, uh, oh, DB and Zach and all them. And they're like, they're like, you know, you go back and look at it and they're like, dude, I score so many points against everybody else, but I can't score shit against you because right. your defense is so good. You know, they always say, you know, offense but, wins games, defense wins championships. Yeah. 
Uh, it was the Phoenix Suns. That's who I played as. They had the number one scoring. Well, uh, it's kind of funny. So, so I can't remember who was on the Phoenix Suns at the time. Well, I can tell you who wasn't on the Phoenix Suns. Oh, so that's one of the fun facts. I'm pretty sure that. I know that he wasn't in it, but I'm... All right, so we're just going to jump over into the fun facts. Okay, yeah. Now, wait, like I say, the speed run kind of looked pretty lame, so I wasn't going to even waste our time with it, so I'm going to break out a few reviews that... Yeah, is, I'm, I'm not... I, we're going to... These reviews were back in the 90s after the game came out, so yeah. this is going to put it your mindset on how crazy this game yeah. was when it came out. See, I, I've already had a feeling that with sports games, speed runs are going to be something weird, so... And it, it, that one was, so... At the end of the day, there was, I'm almost positive he was playing for the Phoenix Suns at that time. He had to be. If not, he was still with the 76ers. This was the first NBA game not to feature him. Okay. uh, Because this guy uh, refrained from signing the licensing agreements to be used because, and so you're going to say, why does a guy not want to sign? Probably because he's not getting enough money. I will kind of give him props. Even though he was maybe, I hate to say the original bad boy, because that was the Pistons. He was a bad boy of basketball. And you would think what he's just wanting money. The reason he didn't sign the license agreement was the lack of pay to the retired players from the NBA Players Association, or the Players Union. So this guy, is a he still works with the NBA today uh, as a commentator. Uh, Is it Charles Barkley? It's Charles fucking Barkley. At that time, he was running, and I don't know, it was probably a little bit before that. He, he was, was running like, the, the Nike commercials of, I'm not a role model. Mm. Don't look up to me, because he was always fouling out. He yeah. was having the rough fouls. Charles Barkley, when you got him and Shaq on set, that is but worth watching an NBA it's game. Funny. And he was on the Suns. He was on the Suns He was on time. the Suns on and, that time And part. so you had, I think, probably Kevin Johnson, probably one of the Angels, uh Danny Ainge, the uncle to Eric Ainge, uh, just so DB can find that one out there. And uh, DB doesn't listen to us. <laughs> he don't, but I know how he feels about the Ainge clan. All right, so that's really the only fun fact that I have with the game was just kind of who wasn't in it. Of course, Jordan wasn't in it either, yeah. which sucked. Like everybody, I would go ahead and tell you. Yeah, last, I mean, listen, that's the highlight of Jordan's career. Why wasn't he in it? He should have been. in I it. I mean, if you lived in New York. You still had Ewing and John Starks and those punks. Like I can understand if you were Homer for that town, it wouldn't really bother you. You'd probably be glad you ain't got to play against the freaking goat. Uh, yeah, got respect for Kobe. LeBron's kind of a little bitch, just to be honest. Uh, he's still good, but Jordan is the goat. Jordan that is, is it. Go- yeah. Period. I will not accept anything. I agree, that. and it, I don't care. Like for one, let's just go ahead and throw this out. Here. We're not gonna get any young listeners. That's true. We don't even get any listeners, Josh. So we got the the clan out of Belgium or <laughs> right. wherever it's at. Right, right. So I mean, but no, the the whole fact of it is is again it goes back to the gameplay of basketball. Like, yes, if LeBron was back in the nineties and he had to learn that type of gameplay, I think he would have been a great. He, he's a great player for now day basketball. Mm-hmm. If you throw him back in the nineties. His size, I think, would gave him an advantage at it, but I still don't know if he would be great because he doesn't have to play that deep it's physical. It's not physical. It's not that deep physical. He got in the air whenever it was transitioning out of it. So I've got this in the reviews, but this is kind of a fun fact. I ain't really going to call it a fun fact. It's kind of a tidbit that I need to mention before we go to the reviews. Is This game's notable success helped launch EA's other sports games. Both Madden NFL 95 and Triple Play Baseball. You're correct. They did have a baseball game. Oh. They outsold their competitors, NFL 95 and World Series Baseball, respectively, for the first time following NBA Live's release. So I'm not going to say NBA Live necessarily did this, but like I say, they were kind of moving in a direction that nobody was, else yeah, was. Yeah, it was a stepping stone. And so I don't know. I'm sitting here thinking World Series Baseball. I know that was all over Sega. Uh, I don't know if Sega is the one that actually made that, or well, I, I feel like at that time Sega was just Sega, Nintendo was Nintendo. There yeah. wasn't no there was sharing, a- but I feel like that in this time frame, I think is when between I think in the area of ninety five to probably ninety eight, EA really flexed the muscle. They really choked out the rest of the competition. I think they figured it out. Yeah, when the Super Nintendo came out, I feel like EA they they knew what they had to do. They 
I guess had a uh, forward thinking on some yeah. of this stuff. And even though not all of it necessarily works, you know, I'm sure like NBA or, you know, NFL live, NBA live 95, you know, it was really a, a continuation of NBA showdown. And I bet 96 is, it's going to be like the Madden's a little bit better. A little, a little bit, bit better. better. You ain't got to hit a home run. You just got to keep moving in the right direction. Yeah, you just got to keep increasing. All right, so we've got uh, three reviews from magazines I've all I've heard of all three, and you probably have as well. Nintendo Power is one of them. Nintendo Power. I, I took Nintendo Power one out of it. It was kind of boring. You know, oh, well, coach speaking it. Oh, that sucks because I, I, I okay. <laughs> not gonna lie, PSM has ruined me, and so has Tips and Tricks. Because I was waiting for a review to be, you know, this game is asterisk, 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 awesome. Right. You know, right. I, I, I want one of them. And uh, one of the articles that was actually linked to this was how Charles Barkley openly came out and said he was not going to uh, appear in that game. Or uh, even in some of the NBA 2K games unless they start paying uh, the, the players associations and yeah. retirees. So, uh, first one I'm going to come at you with is a Game Pro review. Okay. So, I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and tell Solid you, game in Pro. the history of freaking game magazines, is Nintendo Power, probably Game Pro then. Yeah. I don't know if you go Game Informer next. I know there ain't a whole lot of them. Uh, some of them PS Monthly, PSN Monthlies, we used to read them were good. I mean, I bought that a lot. There's a lot of yeah, PSN Monthlies. Say, those are good. Tips and tricks were good, too. Yeah, yeah you're right. So, you know, Game Pro, I feel like, was, that was, Nintendo Power and Game Pro, that was almost like the Nintendo Sega, the Coke, Pepsi. Yeah. Uh, Game Pro wrote that the Super Nintendo version, and I took out the Sega reviews on here, but the Super Nintendo version that it improves on last year's NBA showdown with better graphics, more in-depth strategy, and more realistic gameplay. They particularly praised the game's 30-degree overhead court view, saying it allows the player a better view of the action while allowing the game to run more smoothly. In February 95, Famitsu Magazine's Reader Cross Review gave the Super Famicom version of this an 8 out of a 10. So, that Famicom, you know, it's the foreign version, but yeah. the Game Pro was pretty high on it. Uh... Next generation. Uh, I've got some of those okay, magazines that's, in there. That, that's um, we probably got the magazines in there that has this could review. Be. Could uh, Next Generation's review of the Super Nintendo version rated it five stars out of five, stating Live 95 Emerge is the best basketball sim available. Now, it's hard because we can't warp ourselves back to 95. True. So that's why I'm like, man, this game was pretty important. Like, I mean, it had its flaws. It kind of has some of the same sports crap that you're going to have with every one but like i don't know that we're where we're at today with ea sports games without this so i think it was uh, I, I, this game has to be a stepping stone like it has to be it has to be a cornerstone of a building block of how ea changed so everything this is one that cracked me up this one is over uh it's from computer gaming world so i'm guessing they're talking about the ms DOS. yeah version. they have to be this one get ready this one's a doozy now i like this game I appreciate what it did. I mean, the game's not my favorite, but I appreciate what it did. I yeah. guess is what I needed to say. <coughs> this is a little tongue in cheek when I tell you what oh, they God. said. This is this might be a little out there. In nineteen ninety six, so yeah, you know, we're talking ninety six. Computer Gaming World declared that the original NBA Live ninety five. Was the fifty seventh best computer game ever released? Really? Now, I don't know about that. Now, I, I don't know that it was. Big, so, I don't know that computer gaming was monster at that time. But I played a lot of damn games, and no offense, to NBA Live, it was all bad. Like sports games sucked early on. Yeah. I, like I'm not a, a PC gamer no more. But back in the day, you didn't play the sports, sports games. On, yeah. it, it just nothing that ever was really strong enough. You know. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do all that finesse, fine movement with Wazda. I would almost enjoy if they would have said, "Hey, here's the." Uh, uh, our top 100 list, and it had it ranked 57 like IGN did. Yeah. That would crack me up. Yeah. We need that list. Is there one out there? I don't know, but 57th ever. Now, that's in 96. Uh, I can tell you probably 20 games are better than that that I would rank ahead of it at that time, but I don't know that I could really tell you 57 games. So, I don't know. I feel like 57 is awful high for this game, but at the same time, I, I couldn't make 57 you can, you games. You can't argue it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I did think that was kind of humorous, that, but I've seen funny. that. So that's all I've really got for it. Uh, 
Uh, you know, like I say, speed rods were kind of weird. It wasn't worth mentioning. Uh, it didn't make any sense. Uh, so let's jump into price charting. Price charting before I forget. How much do you think a loose copy of this game runs, Josh? Now, eBay didn't have a sealed copy. Uh, actually, they had one that had sold, and that's where price charting, because it was the exact amount that sold on price charting. So that's okay. where they were pulling it. Uh, they're pretty close. <laughs> okay. I, I will tell you. Okay, well, I'll tell you afterwards a little something. Okay. So tell me what you think this game. It's a it's a sports game. I, I mean, everybody loved it back in the day. Uh, licensed by Nintendo, got to be mass produced. But it's a banger of a game. Okay, what you got? I dude, I wouldn't shy away of fifteen dollars on this game. You're high. I'm high. You're high. It's a sports game, brother. That is true. Yeah, uh, hey, just think of this: as good as NBA Live '95 is, they had '96, '97, '98, probably '99. So every game gets a little bit better. When you want to buy a Madden, you go buy the one that's three years older. You it, don't. You always buy new. That's right. You always you, buy because new. you want the new features. So yeah. I, I feel like sports games, just like but anything see, else, I, loses its its luster. They do. And I was trying to get into collector mentality of it. Well, I think there's plenty of these out there. So give me your normal rating. My normal, uh, dude, it'd be five dollars. You're right there at it. Yeah. Price charting had it four seventy two. What I seen on eBay was six bucks. Uh, what do you think a complete copy is? There's a little bit of a variance. There's about a five dollar difference. A complete variant. Uh, let's go with twenty five. You're high. I'm high. Twenty four. I mean twenty. Still a little high. Really? Okay. Let's I will go. go ahead and tell you. This was what I was going to tell you. After I looked for a complete copy for the price it was, I couldn't find it actively right now. I probably won't. I'll probably forget about it. But I'm like, I almost was going to buy this. And Is it, it. It's on your list to get. It ain't on my list to get. But I was like, it, it was going to be pretty funny to bust it out at the reveal part of <laughs> yeah. this. You know. Uh, okay. Then uh, 15. I won't keep going down by five. Price charting. Said eighteen ninety nine. The last ones I seen sell on eBay was twelve ninety nine. Okay, so, pretty reasonable. Like I mean, it's a sports game, uh, but a complete game for fifteen freaking dollars. Even if it was the you Untouchables, I'd probably buy. It for yeah, Ugh, bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna go. Let me just drop the hint. We're gonna get a little out in the outer space. Oh, God damn it. So, don't use your normal math. Let's just say that. I've only seen one new one sell, and when I seen what price charting said, it's like, this is bullshit. There's no way it sold for this. Yep. So, then I went to eBay, and I found it in the sold listings, and that's where price charting is pulling it from, so it sold in the last 90 days for the exact amount. Uh, there is no fucking way in hell I would pay this amount. How much do you think a brand new copy of this? So my normal for? math is to multiply this by four. If you told me, if to me, a sixty dollar game with yeah. it being new, I would agree it is not sixty dollars. Yeah, and you said outer space. Outer space. I mean, we're talking about a fucking complete copy for nineteen dollars tops, which yeah. I didn't find that, but you're probably looking at if what I've seen actively that hadn't sold was like twenty five bucks. Yeah. Worth. Outer space compared to that. I'm going to say... Now, it's just that one soul that's skewing everything. Yeah. Somebody love this fucking game is all I'm telling you. 400. You are goddamn almost there. $410 and one penny. Really? Because you got to get that one penny because yeah, leasing got... somebody for $410 fucking dollars ain't enough. Somebody spent $400 on a fucking new one of these. Why? It better be goddamn graded 10 for me to spend $400 fucking dollars on it. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I know. I know. Like, when price charting said that, I normally go to price charting because it's easy. It's all there. Yeah. I write it down, and then I kind of wait till the last second to go on eBay, just kind of get the accurate of what it's yeah, going for. Yeah, the most. And I said, shit, that is the one that the price charting's got. And I went back and looked, and it was the same damn dollar amount, and I'm like, there's no way. No way. The only one, the, I mean, okay, yeah. For one, I'm not paying that. For two... It's got to be because of the simple fact that it was so mass produced that the the astronomical amount that was out there. I think there's probably a fucking case of these set in someone's basement that they just don't even care. It's probably not worth them listing. I don't think this is a rare game. There's no way it should go for $400. No. I think there's just for some reason nobody lists them online. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I ain't got nothing else to say about that. 
you go from five dollars basically to twenty dollars to basically four hundred dollars. That, That's why like a two hundred percent markup, two thousand percent, something like that. I'm not mathing. So, at the end of the day, Josh, if I got this cartridge set in here. And two dollars and fifty cents. Two <laughs> two singles and two quarters and the cartridge. And I say you can have one, take your pick. I'm what? keeping the cart. Yeah, it is pretty solid for a five dollar game. Yeah, I'm keeping the cart. Now, uh like I say it's got its own problems, but five dollars is more than fair. I would if it was ten dollars, I'd probably still take the cart. Yeah. And you start getting over ten dollars for a loose cart, I don't know about That's what, that. I, I said I, I, fifteen was my low, I think. Mm-hmm. I said fifteen dollars. I take fifteen for this. A good game, a good filler for your collection, and it's decent to play. I do think that one thing that we didn't talk about is I think this game would have been way more fun if you had a second person to play with. I don't know about having no damn five people. I ain't never seen shit like that in my life. I ain't got five friends then. I ain't got five friends now, Josh. So I don't know about that. <laughs> so uh, I don't. I think that if me and you played it heads up and we were talking shit against each other, it would be way more fun than playing oh, 100%. against the computer. I think that playing offense and defense would probably be easier. But I'm telling you, for a $5 game, pick it up. I mean, yeah, I, I, I bet think... you all the NBA lives are $5 probably in that time range. I bet they're all just as decent. I, for a sports game, I'm just going to say this. Not a great game. I don't want you to think that I'm ranking this above Mega Man X2 because I'm not. And this isn't going to be in my top 100 by far. But it's a good game that I feel like is very important. That I think it probably gets it overlooked. Uh, again, but I'm telling you, this is a stepping stone that I don't think that if we didn't have the NBA Live series, things would be a little different today. It, it's a building block. All right, so we're going to jump over here into ranking, Josh. Yep. We are... This Same. is the seventh game into the season. So we got three more after this. It is uncanny... That you have the correct ranking like I have. Like, I'm right. I can't oh, believe yeah. that you agree. <laughs> so, for both of us, we're going to run this down. In, I, I think it was like the second game or third game in the first season or two that it started before it started getting It started married. to change. So, we are not on the same wavelength. It's just uncanny with these games where we're at. We got Mega Man X2 at number one. Fifle Goes West at number two, Dirt Track FX at number three, Vortex at number four, Hit the Ice at number five, Super Strike Eagle, also known as Kaka Kaka Boom Boom, at number six. <laughs> do you want me to go first, Josh, or do you want to go ahead and throw this on your ranking? Do you have an argument with yours as to why it's where it's at? Well, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. Better game than Super Strike Eagle. Okay. Well, so, okay. Uh, I have an argument as to why I place them on where it's at. So I'm curious if I could sway you to go with the same you, one. You tell me. You 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 talk it out, and then okay. I'm going to talk it out too. Okay. So my talking it out is this. Okay. Again, better than Kaka Kaka Boom Boom. Better than Hit the Ice. Better than Vortex. So that leaves it right here. At is it better than Dirt Tracks? It's a good question. To me, it is. I think it's better than Dirt Tracks. Do you think it's better than Fifle Goes West? That's where the conundrum is. Is it's a better in Mega Man X two? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I had to ask. I had to ask. So my whole thing is with this is it was a turn. It was a stepping stone, a building block to this game. I give you credit for what you've done. Now I'm not putting the stepping stone. I'm not giving it props for what it did. I'm not putting that into my ranking. I'm just using the fun factor into my ranking. You're just using the fun factor? I, I, want, I don't want anybody to overlook and say this is a fucking basketball game because I feel like it's more than that. It is. But and that's, as far as playing and replayability, this is how I'm ranking this game. See, and that's my thing. Like, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going by playability, but I, I'm, I'm giving it the credit that it's due as well. But overall, to this game, it's all about the playability. That's the way it works. And to me, is this game's got an amazing replayability, I think. It would be better going up against somebody else. Right. But the odds of that happening are slim. And are you trying to talk me into this, or are you trying to talk yourself? It's repetitive. It's oh, a basketball game. Right. All sports right. games are repetitive. You're right. That puts it at number three. I think Fievel's a slightly better game. 
So you're saying it's because, better than Dirt Track FX? Yes. I think Fievel itself is better because of the replayability. That's me personally. So what you're trying to tell me, let me write this down here. Mega Man X2, Fievel Goes West, NBA Live 95, Dirt Track FX, Vortex, Hit the Ice, Ka Ka Boom Boom. You're saying fuck some FX chip. No, well, yes, on this season I am. Because this game was better than that. Because. Well, I'm just going to. I'm going to talk my way through this. Super Strike Eagle was bad. Yep. I still don't know that it's free. When I think. When I'm hitting Super Strike Eagle, we're not even. We've not played a game as. Hit the Ice was bad. And that might have been like, hey, which is worse? I'm trying to determine, like, hey, Super Strike Eagle, and I think of it as, like, the first thing that pops up is when we dump it in there, is it worse than Untouchables? I don't think it is. But think but so. that's when I hear that name. Yeah. Kaka, kaka, boom, boom. It was just unplayable. Yeah. So, yes, this game is better than that. Uh, hit the Ice, it is definitely better than Hit the Ice. Yep. I mean, Hit the Ice had some of the same sports problems, but as well, uh, this game was remotely fun. Yeah. The ice was not fun. Uh, Vortex was almost unplayable. Uh, I had I could pl- I could play hit the ice uh, more than I could play Vortex, but what little I could play of Vortex before I couldn't get any farther was funner than hit the ice. Yeah, uh, Dirt Track FX is where I'm really. It's kind of the the gut check, and it's like Mega Man X two. It's close. No, it's not. Hey, Mega Man X is still number one. Five goes west. Uh, you know, one thing, even though I'm not a platformer guy, Super Nintendo is freaking loaded with platforms. Yeah. And they're good at it. Fifal is better than this game, yes. Uh, dirt Track FX, you had the FX chip. It's freaking dirt bike racing. You know, I feel like you know, when I play Dirt Track, I'm like, this is freaking excite bot. Uh, you know, you got NBA Live that kind of gets boring over repetitive gameplay. Dirt Track FX gets boring over repetitive gameplay. You get different stages, but it's the same shit. Yep. Where I give a tip of the hat to one or the other. Because you've got this at number three and Dirt Track at number four now. And my only thing is uh, just the fun factor on it. I think I play NBA Live 95 more than I can play it, and I can at least get real players, even though I can't tell who the fuck I'm playing with when I'm with them. Like, I have to see who's on my team before I play or call a timeout or pause it. Yep. I think I can play NBA Live 95 far longer than I can play Dirt Track FX. So I'm putting mine at fucking number three, too. So we're still the same (laughs) through seven fucking games. Now, uh, not my favorite game. Uh... It, you're hitting the freaking nostalgia. You're hitting the uh, uh, 90s basketball era, which was fun. Uh, sadly enough, Dirt Track and Vortex are not going to be a top 100 game. I'm almost positive. Uh, NBA Live 95, probably 96, 97, 98. They're probably not going to be top 100 games either. But NBA Live 95, I can at least play it because you can kind of, you got more game modes, you can customize your options. I think it's probably more fun to play with somebody else. But. At the end of the day, I can kind of at least put myself on this team and say, hey, I feel like I'm Scotty. Or, yeah. hey, you can kind of relate to it. And even though the gameplay is goofy, Dirt Track FX is pretty goofy gameplay, too. Like, yeah. I, I think the controls are overrated on that. I did not, you know, Dirt Track, I don't want it to be overinflated because I don't think Dirt Track FX was that fun either. It's just the games that we played after that wasn't good either. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like, we, I think Dirt Track was literally the third game we played, and everything we played after that sucked. So, uh, yeah, NBA Live 95 is number three. So I can't believe that we're seven games in, and we both have Mega Man X2, Fifle Goes West, NBA Live 95, Dirt Track FX, Vortex, Hit the Ice, and Kaka Kaka Boom Boom. We might be, are we going to finish ten fucking games this season? With the same ranking, Josh. I don't know, but if you look at it, this is what I got, got has me. Curious. There is a there is a line right here that is definite. Yeah. Hit the ice and super strike eagle and vortex. I feel like hit the ice and super strike is in a tier to its own. Vortex is in no man's land. Dirt tracks and NBA Live is close. Fifel is by far, I think, the number two front runner and Mega Man X two. So like, if we get some mediocre to shitty games. 
that's where the variance yeah. is going to come. And and here and this is my little thing that I've noticed. All right, <clears throat> so far this season, we've played two Capcom games, right? Two FX chips, right? Two sports games. Two sports games. Are we getting a freaking an, another airplane game? I don't know. Are we going to get an Amiga game? Go back to our roots. Go back to our roots and get an Amiga. Or, well, we played two this season. Just put this in, a, in mind. We played three FX games <clears throat> overall of the, yeah, uh, in out the of Star the Fox last year. Which I will say, we're, we're probably rolling at about a 10%, you know, banger game with Mega Man X2, Star Fox, some of those games. But here's also the thing, too. Are we going? St- are we actually going to stick true? Are we going to draw another Hitman game? Uh, there, I don't know. We got three left out there. Just the way it runs, I'm calling it. Yes, you, you we're getting, it. we're getting. It's got to be. They only did 95 and 96, and then they did two PGA Tour games. Which I'll go ahead and tell you, the freaking golf games on Super Nintendo was fire. From what I remember, I ain't played them in 20 something damn years. I feel like they were fire. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and call that. If I'm gonna call that, we are gonna get another Hitman uh, produced game. Uh, and you're thinking golf. Yeah, I hope it's golf. Two basketball games back to back might be a little. That's rough. That's a little rough. I'm gonna make my cat my my call your shot. You put in your hundred dollars to win a million. I'm putting on the Hitman games prediction. My backup is I think we're gonna go back to our roots. We're gonna get a fucking Amiga Me. game. Okay. Okay. What do you call it? Mine. I think we're getting an airplane game. I think we're getting some type of flight simulator. Okay. Okay. Well, and just it, anything in an airplane. Yep. Okay. And my backup, I'm going to go back to my roots. I want a solid RPG. An RPG. Well, it'd be interesting. Uh, I feel like if we get a good game, I think I know where we are on number one and two. It's yeah. that three, four, five, I think. I can guarantee, even if we finish this season with all ten games ranked the same, which would blow my mind. This is never going to happen again. We're no. never going to get to seven games again. When we dump these into the other 20 games... Oh, it's going to get weird. It is going to get weird. It's going to get weird. It's going to get weird. And because we're going to have to talk our way through it. We're going to have to talk our way through like every five games or something. I don't know. It's going to be a bonus episode. So, uh, it'll be pretty exciting. Uh, it will. I can't wait. Now, we played in the first season slash second season. We played 20 games. We played 10 this time. I think this one's a little more cut and paste, a little black and white, yeah. wet and dry but, versus yeah. the first season when you're doing 20 games. So uh, I'm kind of excited. I'm kind of excited to revisit the other 20 games. Yeah, as of right now, there's not really a big gray area this season. You know, Dirt Track, I almost put Dirt Tracks up, but I'm like, I can play NBA Live. I, that, yeah, I can play a little. I can play NBA Live a little. A little Other bit than more. that, I don't know. I mean, between me and you, I can't argue that you're right or wrong. Uh, you know, if you argued Dirt Tracks was better than NBA Live, I kind of get it. I'm still where I'm at on it, but yeah, I guess we're gonna see. We're gonna draw the uh, eighth game. Eighth game, yes, eighth yeah. game of the season. Itching closer toward the end of the season, where we're gonna rank these bastards. So. Uh, I guess this is where we're going to leave it. NBA Live 95, good game, I thought, uh, for its time. Solid. If you play NBA 2K23, you're probably going to hate this game. This is not the same game as that. Absolutely not the same. All right, well, we're going to peace out here. We're going to draw another game. We're going to put a week into it, and then we're going to let you know how right I am and how wrong Josh is. Yeah, we'll see. See. See ya. <laughs>